my name is Sam, and I will be discussing Nandu Mukhe's 2012 mixed-media short film Yellow Fever, which uses stop-motion animation and live-action expressive dance to reclaim Kenyan women's bodies and to construct an allegory of disease to visualize a socio-political phenomenon. Muke evokes a sense of illness through the visual motif of sickly yellow, jarring sonics, and claustrophobic and expansive camera work. Muke's use of animation facilitates parody and satire, introducing a colorful comedic absurdity to the film, juxtaposed against the visual austerity of the live-action dance scenes. Pale-hued yellow makes numerous appearances throughout the film. The beauty products which fill the title screen flicker with yellow, hinting at their contents while also establishing a visual motif which reworks the cartographic, anthropologic, and ethnographic images which architects of the colonial project drew on parchment paper. In the film's first fully animated scene in the hair salon, the hands and face of young Niendo's hairstylists appear jaundiced, while speckles of brown peek in at the knuckles which braid Niendo's hair as if cranking machinery. In the subsequent live-action scene, a pale yellow flickers across the dancer's face and hands while she claws at her forearms as if suffering from a skin disease. She is surrounded by blackness while she sits in a pile of sand, which clings to her knees, furthering the visual imagery of pale yellow on black skin. In the live-action scenes which employ close-ups of the dancer's body with ethnographic images superimposed onto her legs and stomachs, the pale hue of the parchment blends with the dark brown skin to create a sallow complexion. The body of one of the models quakes and creaks as if in the throes of an illness, accompanied by discordant string music, while Mouquet superimposes landscape photographs onto her body. In a later scene, one of the live action models stands surrounded by the flickering beauty products of the title sequence. She looks up in aspiration and begins to pose, suspended in time, as the camera circles her and the lens grows further and further away. As the camera continues to capture her from, e from each increasingly wide shot, the black oblivion which surrounds her takes up more of each subsequent shot. A whispered melody supplements the scene, invoking an ominous feeling. In the product circling of the model, Mouquet constructs a commentary on the ways in which media messaging surrounds us in an increasingly digital society. In the following live action scene, a lighter skinned model contorts her face into anguished expressions while sitting on the ground and holding a conch shell to her ear, while a darker skinned model throws her hands over and around her, pushing and pulling. The whispered voiceover contributes to the intimate turmoil of the couple's dance. Subsequently, Mouquet uses jump cuts between the two individual dancers sitting on their hands and knees as both writhe and jerk around, evoking a strained reconciliation and eventual unification of the two figures into one. In one of the last live action scenes of the film, a model emerges from the ground with red lips, long, thick black hair, and a glistening white film covering her body. She ascends from a cesspool of flashing cartographic, ethnographic, and anthropologic images, which Mouquet also projects onto her body. The model appears as a bastardized version of the beauty ideal embodied by skin bleaching products, parodying it as she does so. Mouquet then parodies television advertisements which tout the benefits of skin bleaching, acting as the model for a satirized recreation for one of these advertisements. Bouquet further employs such comedic absurdity as a subversive tool in her imposing of cutout white hair, skin, and features onto her niece. The hodgepodge of the cutout, dirty blonde, wavy hair, and white features juxtaposed against the animated black body of her niece creates a perturbing image. In using animation as one of the film's media, Bouquet visualizes the imaginary, expanding upon the themes which she symbolically represents in the live-action dance scenes. Moreover, in the opening hair salon scene, Mouquet's sister wears a green t-shirt with the New York Statue of Liberty in the center. Mouquet's niece, on the other hand, wears a bright pink top with the Eiffel Tower in the center. In her inclusion of the signifiers of American and European cities, Mouquet acknowledges the influence of Western media on contemporary Kenyan pop culture. Mouquet ties together the live action and animated scenes when she captures close-ups of dreadlocks and braided hair while she discusses the coarse weave of her mother's carpet at home. In this way, Mouquet introduces tactile imagery into the following animated scene, providing an immediacy which allows the viewer to imagine themselves on that same carpet. Mouquet's animated scenes offer a levity and familiarity to the film with bright colors and intricate patterns complementing the childlike exuberance of her young niece as she proclaims her desire to become white. 
In contrast, Mukai's live action dance scenes appear stark and severe, as the, model don, as the models don hues of brown, gray, and black while engulfed by a pervasive darkness. While the animated scenes embody a comfortable domesticity, the live action dance scenes evoke a confined isolation. And using the bodies of her models as screens upon which she projects ethnographic images, Mukai reflects the images back to the viewer. She draws upon the legacy of these portrayals, using them to visualize a reclamation of Kenyan women's bodies, Kenyan land, and Kenyan popular media. 